Sensory processing is the perception, organization, and interpretation of sensory information in the nervous system. Being able to integrate this sensory input in the brain is necessary for interacting with the world around us. Sensory processing disorders occur when sensory signals are undetected or disorganized, resulting in atypical responses. There are many different types, however, the most researched are sensory over-responsivity and sensory under-responsivity. Over-responsivity means automatic, intense responses to sensations, which can result in exaggerated flight, fight, or freeze sympathetic responses. This can present as emotional reactions to seemingly small events others would not find alarming. Sensory under-responsivity means a lack of reaction to sensations that would typically elicit a response and can present as a lack of drive to initiate exploration. This decreased reactivity can be dangerous because a person can fail to respond to things like pain or extreme temperatures. There are various treatments for sensory processing disorders, including modification of the environment or activity to not exacerbate symptoms, or physiotherapy to improve balance and gross motor planning. Occupational therapy using a sensory integration approach is a frequently used method that takes advantage of the brain's ability to rewire itself to alter any maladaptive connectivity causing sensory processing issues. This rewiring is known as plasticity, and it occurs throughout the nervous system as a result of experience interacting with the world. Plasticity allows for connections between neurons, called synapses, to be modified to either increase or decrease in strength. One type of long-lasting synaptic plasticity is known as long-term potentiation, where patterns of frequent activation cause enduring increases in synaptic connection strength. It ensures that stimuli which are important are registered, forming the basis of learning and memory. This occurs when excitatory neurotransmitters are released from the presynaptic neurons to cause a strong depolarization of the postsynaptic cell through binding to AMPA receptors. The depolarization causes NMDA receptors on the postsynaptic side to initiate cellular mechanisms such as gene transcription to make new AMPA receptor proteins to respond to even more neurotransmitters and thus increase the size of the connection. At a structural level, there is an increase in the number of synaptic contacts between the neurons through dendritic and axonal branching. Altogether, this causes increased neuronal responses and can yield permanent modifications of brain function, lasting even years. Another type of plasticity is long-term depression, which involves patterns causing decreases in synaptic strength for when a stimulus or event no longer has importance. It occurs when there is less frequent neuron firing and limited NMDA activation, which signal the internalization of AMPA receptors, thus further decreasing the size of the connection and sensitivity of the postsynaptic neuron to the excitatory neurotransmitters. At a structural level, there is a decrease in the number of synaptic contacts between the associated neurons or a loss of neurons altogether. This causes a decrease in the neuronal response, which can also last years. In sensory processing disorders, there is altered AMPA and NMDA receptor expression in the thalamus and cortical synapses, amygdala, and hippocampus, thus affecting synaptic transmission and both potentiation and depression. Over and under responsivity are hypothesized to be caused by autonomic imbalances involving the amygdala, which attaches fear emotions and salience to stimuli after an association. The amygdala receives processed input from the thalamus and cortex. It can receive memories as well as store memories for later from reciprocal connections with the hippocampus. The amygdala projects to the brainstem and hypothalamus to influence autonomic functions like sweating and heartbeat. Finally, it connects back with the cortex for higher order processing of emotion and the guidance of complex behaviors. In over-responsivity, increased connectivity of these structures results in sensory events being able to quickly activate the entire network, explaining the experience of pain or fear to ordinary sensations. Under-responsivity is likely caused by less connectivity in this region after abnormal development, and over time, the decreased activation would likely result in depression, making communication between neurons even less likely. To treat these disorders, sensory integration therapy is frequently used, primarily with children. It is individually tailored sensory motor activities that take advantage of the brain's ability for plasticity to remodel sensory processing pathways.
Treatment for overresponsivity involves interacting with various stimuli in a controlled manner so as not to overwhelm the child in order to diminish the fear and salience connections using the principles of long-term depression. It also involves rewiring more adaptive connections that allow the child to self-regulate. Treatment may look like swinging, touching different textures, finger painting, and jumping on beanbags, all to reduce aversive responses to stimuli. Treatment for under-responsivity involves building connections through potentiation to increase the salience network connections and draw attention to stimuli, or it can increase cortical representation of sensations. Treatment may include activities performed in front of a mirror to provide visual cues to improve body awareness, fine motor activities to increase tactile recognition, and experimenting with heavy and light objects to learn to discriminate the difference. For sensory integration therapy to be beneficial, research shows it requires the active engagement of its participants, not just sensory stimulation. Exploration should be self-initiated and should involve adaptation to new challenges. Therapists should use the outlined treatment protocols, which involve several core elements listed here. The evidence for this treatment is limited but growing. Several systematic reviews show that interventions which adhere strictly to the protocols are effective, with outcomes including reduced behaviors linked to sensory problems, better functional skills and participation in daily activities, and reduced caregiver burden. Therefore, intensive, clinic-based treatment that follows protocol will benefit children with sensory processing disorders, especially over and under responsivity. Due to its activity-based treatment and benefits to occupations, integration therapy is best suited for administration by a trained occupational therapist, though other interventions still play a role in treating sensory processing disorders, such as physiotherapy for treating gross motor difficulties and balance. Limitations of this intervention include potentially costly services, dedicating time to treatment, and unclear underlying neuroscience. However, for most, sensory integration is a worthwhile intervention to ensure participants can engage effectively in the world. Limitations in research include small sample sizes, lack of blinding, not controlling for medication, and not distinguishing protocol-followed sensory integration from other sensory-based interventions. To build evidence, higher-level studies that address these limitations should be conducted. Also, the underlying neuroscience remains largely theoretical. Future animal model and human studies should be conducted to better understand the neural mechanisms of the disorder and how sensory integration therapy is affecting change.